What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles back at you with another video. This video we're going to talk about five of the most common pet snakes and why they may not be the best pet snake for you. Before we dive into the video, let's show off this guy. This guy is one of my favorite blood boas. He is a blood that is 100% het sharp. He's actually a hypo blood, a salmon specifically. Really pretty animal and I just, I love this guy. I think he's a cool looking color, very cool pattern. I'm going to give you a close up of his head because I think the heads are awesome. See if we can get this guy's head to show off on camera. How about that head? Pretty cool, right? And uh, the tail is awesome. Just a really pretty looking snake. He doesn't get enough screen time, so I thought it would be good to pull him out. But let's dive into the five most common pet snakes that may not be a good pet snake. Number one, everybody knows it's coming from me, and that is a ball python. Bear with me, I got some great pet snakes coming up here, and I'm not going to wreck ball pythons here. The beauty of a ball python, and what is kind of the con of the ball python, is that they don't really do much. They sit there, and that's why a lot of people are drawn to them, is they are a really good pet snake in the sense if you don't want an active animal. A boa on the other hand is more active, a reticulated python, things like that. They're more active, they're going to be moving on you, they're not necessarily going to just sit there. So if you're looking for a snake that kind of sits there, has this more laid back attitude, a ball python may be really good for you. At the same time, if you're looking for a more active animal, then maybe a ball python is not the best choice. Another con of ball pythons is they can be picky feeders and seasonal feeders, which for a first time pet owner is very frustrating. And that is one of my biggest reasons I don't have ball pythons anymore. I had a lot of ball pythons years ago, 2000s, early 2000s, 2010, and I decided they're just not for me. I was not in ball pythons for the right reasons. I was in it for money, and that is not a reason to be breeding snakes in general. So I got out of ball pythons and I stuck with my passion, which are boa control. Constrictors. So, number two, the pet snake that I feel is not necessarily a good snake for everybody. Let's dive into the boa. So, this is the one that I had to put on the list because this is not the ideal pet for everybody. Boa constrictors can get larger, significantly larger than ball pythons. At the same time, this is a full grown adult male, so he's a good one to show off. Now, this guy is blood, so he does have some dwarf in him, and he's probably about five and a half, six feet. At full grown, when he is completely full grown, because snakes never stop growing throughout their lifetime, they will get about five to six feet for a dwarf animal like this. Males in general, five to seven feet. Females, about six to eight feet. There's always those exceptions. They get larger and smaller, but we're talking average animals within the average lifespan. Especially if you're going for dwarfs, things like this that have dwarf blood in them are going to be on the smaller side. Those are your Sonorans, your Tarahamaras, your Leopards. Uh, Leopard is a Sonoran based morph. Your Bloods, things like that are generally smaller, but always check with your breeder because breeders tend to mix. And at this point, it's really rare to find pure animals. If you do, you're generally paying for it. So if you didn't pay for it, you probably didn't get the pure animal. If the breeder doesn't know, they probably don't have the pure animal either. There's always ways to backtrack it, but only so much. So boa constrictors are number two. The third animal that is a very common pet snake that is not always great for everybody, but I do tend to recommend it quite a bit for those newer snake keepers, is a corn snake. So I figured I would change it up, put the boa back, and let's show off this girl here. This is a sun-kissed corn snake. She's a pretty normal, basic morph. Not a very expensive animal, and it's basically a normal. Now, she is het for scaleless, which is why I have her here, and she's a beautiful female. She is a call it a sub-adult to adult, a small adult female. Why I think these can be frustrating pets, especially as younger animals, are for a couple reasons. The first reason is they're very small. So that is, or I guess this is a double part for the small reason, is they're very small and the problem with the small snake is it's hard to contain them. So your caging needs to be different or you'll wake up one day and your snake will be gone. That is very frustrating, especially if you're a little kid and your snake is gone. As corn snakes and small snakes in general, they're gonna be gone for good for the most part. Unless you have a really small, closed off, tight space, the snake is probably gonna be gone. So if you lose a baby corn snake, you probably lost your snake for good. 
The other downside of a corn snake is with little kids they tend to pinch and I've said this multiple times that is really bad for a small snake. If you are having a small kid that doesn't know how to control how much they're squeezing yet, you can easily injure an animal like this. So for that reasons or for those two reasons, I say corn snakes are not a good pet for people. However, just like the boa constrictor, corn snakes are super hardy, they eat readily, and from a frustration standpoint, you're probably not going to have it with a corn snake or a boa constrictor. I should have mentioned it for that. And when I say boa constrictor, I'm classifying all boas. Boas in that constrictor range. We're not going into things like rainbow boas or anacondas. I'm just talking boa constrictor, boa imperator, different subspecies of boa constrictor or whatever they're classified as now. The next pet snake I am going to say is not necessarily the best animal for all is a milk snake or a king snake. I'm going to put these both in the same category because they are fairly similar to each other and they're actually fairly similar to corn snakes as well. This girl here is a black milk snake, not to be confused with the Mexican black king snake, although they do look similar. Let's get a zoom in of her head, really cool looking head, it's got the shovel nose going on. So hopefully that zooms in nicely. These, be, these are born tricolor, and as they grow, they shed, they get the melanin increase, and they become completely black, super iridescent animals. I don't know if the camera's picking up the iridescence, but the iridescence on these guys are absolutely amazing. This girl also just shed, and I thought it was a perfect time to show her off. This is about the size that the average male will get. Females will get about a foot or so larger than this, so she's a small, call it adult female. She is about six or seven years old. They will get larger, but they're really cool snakes in that sense. Why I do not recommend these for a lot of people is they can be cannibalistic and they can eat each other. So if you are keeping animals and you put them together for playtime and you're not looking at them all the time, you can have a fight between the two and they might try to eat each other. Is it rare? Yes, it is. But it is, it is more common than with other species like boas, pythons, and different corn snakes. You generally don't see those animals eating each other becoming cannibalistic however king snakes have their name because they will eat other snakes and milk snakes follow suit they will eat other snakes especially of their own kind and if especially if they're a little bit smaller than them and they're hungry they may take a go at it so for those reasons as well as the reasons I mentioned for corn snakes these guys are total escape artists I have eight of these that just hatched out I'm gonna keep them all mainly because I was going to sell two of them and three of them got loose. And when they get loose, they can find the smallest crack, little space possible. And I've fortunately found them, but at the same time, it is really frustrating, especially if you're a little kid and you lose your pet snake, they're also very small and you can pinch them. So corn snakes, or I should say milk snakes and king snakes, number four pet snakes that are common. They can be great, but not great for all. And the fifth animal that I'm going to classify is more of a category as opposed to a specific animal, but that is anything that is a tropical slash subtropical species that is more specialized. So something like this Brazilian rainbow boa. This is a beautiful caramel albino or T positive albino Brazilian rainbow boa. She is beautiful, amazing animal really just a, one of the highlights of my collection. I love this girl and I love the others that I have of these. The problem with Brazilian rainbow boas, and I'm, this classifies to Colombian rainbow boas, blood pythons, uh, anacondas, anything in that realm that is not necessarily a common pet snake, but is something that you will see often at reptile shows, emerald tree boas, things like that is not because they make bad pet snakes, but their care requirements are much more difficult and stringent. It's not that, uh, difficult isn't the correct word, but stringent is probably the right way to put it, is these guys are less forgiving. A boa, a ball python, a king snake, corn snake, if you leave those alone, if they get a little bit too dry, it's not a big deal. If you dry out a tropical species like a Brazilian rainbow boa or a blood python, they're going to have serious health consequences to this. An anaconda, if you dry these guys out, they're gonna die. Literally, they will die within a few days if they're dry. So with species like this, especially younger species like the Brazilian rainbow boa or a blood python, if you keep them too dry for a week or dry for a week, they're gonna die on you. Now, as they get older, they certainly become more resilient, but when they're young, they're kind of difficult in the sense where you have to maintain their care requirements. 
Again, a boa, not a big deal. A boa constrictor will say, not a big deal if you let them dry out for a month. They're going to be fine. They're not going to die. But something like this, like these Brazilian rainbow boas, they will die on you if you dry them out. So same thing with blood pythons. And although they can make fantastic pets, this is a full-grown or a near-full-grown Brazilian rainbow boa. I like to call them a mix between a corn snake and a boa. This is the perfect hybrid animal. However, their care requirements are much more stringent and you need to pay attention to your cage. I would always recommend get your cage under control. They need high humidity, lower temperatures, Otherwise, they're amazing animals and they can become awesome pets. This girl here would make a fabulous pet for somebody or one of her babies would make an amazing pet for somebody. But you have to be ready and you have to understand what you're getting yourself into. We'll take one more look at this girl here because she's just beautiful. I'm, I'm trying to not look at her as I'm doing the video. But those are my top five most common reptile pets that are not necessarily great as pets. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely check out my Patreon if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one time or join in a community chat. Check out my website for some available animals. I have boas, burmese, pythons, and a handful of rainbow boas available right now. Always feel free to reach out to me if you have questions related to animals you're looking to purchase. And until next week, let's keep it moving, guys.